Thank you for taking the time to hear about the work I've done during my time as a summer intern with Esri. The goal for this project was to create a prototype of a solution for the maritime routing optimization problem. To build an appreciation for the industry, I present a few insightful facts. As one of the oldest industries in the world, transported goods via sea accounts for 90% of the world trade. So without the maritime industry, we wouldn't be able to enjoy so many things we take for granted, such as imported foods like bananas, avocados, coffee, seafood, um, as well as technology such as our phones, computers, and cars, as well as clothes, building material, and many more unnamed goods. And carrying some of our daily use possessions are the largest container ships, which can cost over $200 million to construct and hold up to 15,000 containers. Another way to think about it is they can hold up to 745 million bananas. At any given time, there are about 20 million containers being transported across seas. And so if we do a little math, only considering the largest container ships out at sea, there are a little over 1,300 large container ships transporting goods at any given time. And this is not even considering empty ships traveling to be filled, um, tankers, commercial, fishing boats, personal or recreational boats, and scientific vessels. And as essential as the maritime industry is in providing convenience to our lives, the routes that these ships, these ships take are traditional but not necessarily the optimal. So the aim here was to arrive at some sort of solution that would calculate the optimal route for ships to navigate in the open ocean while considering the three major factors that influence their journey, time, energy, and safety. Time is an extremely important factor to consider, not only for us living in a time where we expect online purchases to be delivered within days, but especially for the shipping companies as well. Every second counts for a shipping company, so much so that cutting down time to lift a single container onto a single ship by one second could save a company $4,000 a year. Now scale that up to saving time by days and for a whole fleet of ships, and dollar signs easily go up to the millions for a company. For the energy factor, ships traveling at 18 or 19 knots can expect to burn about 400 tons of fuel per day, which amounts to $191,000 for a single 24-hour period. And that cost goes up when the ship uses higher quality fuel. Unfortunately, um, based off of the literature and research, the third factor, safety, is not of equal priority for a lot of these shipping companies. Maritime industry workers have one of the most dangerous jobs in the U.S., facing a higher risk of fatality, injury, and illness. Their fatality rate is 4.7 times higher than the rate of all U.S. workers. So this is something I kept in mind as I worked on this optimization problem. So where does Esri fit in this optimization problem? Well, the maritime problem is a spatial problem. With that being said, Esri's tools can provide the ultimate solution to optimal routing with the ArcGIS platform, more specifically with the Living Atlas data, providing weather and ocean current forecasting, um, cost and path tools, which I will get to in the next slide, a weighted overlay to give users capability of assigning priorities in the routing, and machine learning models to constantly enhance the user experience. So um, what can make this solution unique is the dynamic access to near real-time data through the Living Atlas, uh, the ability for users to adjust priorities for routing, uh, and the ability to dynamically update the route as conditions change. Ultimately, this allows users to balance the factors of saving time, energy, and lives. So the two tools presented here are the backbone of this prototype, along with other vector geoprocessing tools. So distance accumulation calculates the accumulated distance for each cell to sources. And what's great about this tool for this use case is one can give the user capability of choosing cost surfaces that will influence their route, like, um, for example, weather conditions, ocean currents, and avoidance areas such as marine protected areas. And the Optimal path as line tool calculates the optimal path from a source to a destination as a line in which the ship will follow. And so together, these two, these two tools 
um, which by the way are already in the spatial analysis toolbox, um, provide a strong foundation for building the optimal maritime route tool. So before we get into some short demos, um, the next few slides are meant to show the early experiments that I did with the distance accumulation and optimal path as line tools without considering cost, uh, just to get a sense of how the tools performed under different extents um, as well as resolutions. So here is the results of running the two tools with the resolution of 10 kilometers in three different extents and their recorded times. The first record is the time it took for distance accumulation to run and the following record is the time it took for optimal path as line tool to run. So for the first extent, it took distance accumulation 13 seconds and optimal path two seconds to run from Boston to Halifax. For the North Atlantic Basin, um, it took distance accumulation 16 seconds and optimal path five seconds. And for the North, Paci North Pacific Basin run, it took distance accumulation one minute, 46 seconds and optimal path six seconds. And of course, ships don't take this route to go from the west coast of the US to the east coast of China. So this is a shortcoming uh, that I note in the closing slides. For the five kilometer resolution runs, you can see distance accumulation and optimal path took about the same time for the, fir for the same first two extents. And I show here another extent run, the Panama Canal. And as you can see, this resolution is too coarse to realistically route a ship through narrow channels. So for the final resolution, uh, finest resolution, one kilometer, we can see it took distance accumulation quite longer to complete its calculation for the North Atlantic Basin extent. However, the two tools did successfully run through the Panama Canal in a significantly shorter period of time. So something to note, however, upon consulting with Esri staff, I decided 10 kilometer resolution is a sufficient scale to run the prototype for practical purposes. So things get more exciting when I start to introduce travel costs and weights. What you can see here are the three more extents. The first two uh, is in the South Indian Ocean uh, with the weighted cost raster and accumulated distance raster to the first and second ex extent respectively. And the third extent is in the Northern Indian Ocean. Uh, the color schemes are backwards, so red means lower cost to travel and green means higher cost. And the cost that went into the weighted cost raster were wind speed, distance from shore, and distance from marine protected areas. In the South Indian extent instances, we can see that the route has been diverted to the north in the middle of the Indian Ocean due to severe winds. So here I am playing the North Atlantic Basin extent going from Boston to a port uh, in the western coast of Northern Africa. And this is a short run of what the path would look like for the ship to take, considering these costs I previously mentioned. Now, this extent, with the same costs in mind, is going from Dar es Salaam port to the western coast of Southern Africa, uh, Namibi port. And this extent is taking place in the Southern Indian Ocean, going from Durban Port to Fremantle Port in Western Australia. And this route takes a little longer just because the distance between the ports is obviously a little longer. And the last run takes place in the Northern Indian Ocean uh, going from Mukdishu port off of the eastern part of Africa to Chennai port, uh, which is a port in the eastern part of India. So for the purposes of the prototype, these are the factors I included, but it is important to note that users can enter almost any raster surface representing the cost. For example, they can include um, bathymetry, or I could have tried uh, AIS-based ship traffic density, as well as ocean current direction. So before I close, I just want to highlight a few of the outstanding obstacles I came across during the summer. Uh, the first one you've already seen, which is routing across the Pacific Basin from West Coast US to Eastern Asia. 
Another uh, issue worth resolving is being able to route across the prime meridian. And some of the next steps I'm excited to have incorporated in the optimal maritime routing solution are wind and ocean current directions. Right now, I only have speed. And I also tried automating uh, setting the extents for which the runs are bounded in order to cut computation costs. And that is something I'm sure can be resolved for the next time.